Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and being a producer of Wrestle Massacre, as well as Inside Movies Galore, I am David Streggy, and welcome to Delusions of Grandeur. Enjoy the reviews. I certainly did. college flunkies. I've had enough of this from you and from everyone else. I know what you guys are trying to do. Break me down, drive me out of the force. Well, it's gonna take a hell of a lot more than a lame prank like this to get Curtis Mooney to throw in his badge, so fuck you. Over. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host, David Stregian. and here I have another review for you, uh, this time of four short films that uh, uh, director Heidi Moore did uh, between uh, 2012 and 2014. And the reason why I went back and uh, um, reviewed these when I was on, uh, when I was blogging for uh, movies galore of Milwaukee is because I had picked up a film of hers that she had on Legless Corpse uh, Films, uh, which I'll um, review later. Uh, but um, I found out that she had some short films that she had done beforehand. And uh, some time ago, I had actually tried to um, get her on Inside Movies Galore to, uh, to interview her. And she gave me the cold shoulder. Um, she, uh, uh, by me specifically only asking her for another, uh, another day that we could do the interview uh, and reminding her who I was and that I had put money towards her campaign. She ended up eventually blocking me and telling me that <laughs> I don't know how to speak to females. And yet it was my own female who ag actually asked me to ask her when she would probably do the interview since she had canceled the night before. And uh, I'd never had this happen before. Uh, uh, before. But regardless, uh, uh, She thought that I was do, uh, uh, do, uh, doing some, uh, something wrong, uh, wrong. I was just trying to get her on the show. She treated me like shit, but regardless, I figured I'd go on about her films anyways. Um, the one thing I don't recommend you reviewers out there in any way, shape, or form, do not try to contact this uh, young woman. I think that she has some problems. Um, she tried to go behind my back and talk to some of my um, fellow people that uh, that I work uh, work uh, work with, and uh, there was even someone who came out from uh, uh, came out of the woodworks from horror net, uh, uh, network who tried to talk to me about. being honest and I was that I was only telling half of the truth well I, I was telling the truth that I knew so enough of that I'm gonna go into the short fi uh, uh, films that I uh, uh, one uh, one time review viewed the first uh, short film um, that she directed uh, um, 
and this is with Wretched Productions. This is her particular company. Um, figured I'd talk about the, uh, uh, these uh, beginning short f uh, films all in one kit and caboodle. Now, Mommy is the name of this particular short film. I don't know whether this is the first short film or uh, that she did uh, uh, did or the last sh short film that she did in 2012. But what I do know is that uh, this was originally called M is for Mommy, as I believe that she had filmed this production for ABC uh, for the ABCs of Death Anthology. Uh, but like many films that were submitted, many were rejected uh, that I actually think that this was a really good short film. It was shot really well. Um, I believe the character uh, uh, playing the mother la uh, lady, Sarah Heinzman, as there seems to be an adult man in the crib and diapers, as she is crooning him, she eerily off keys sings to him some kind of a lullaby, which ultimately the camera angle is making it look like he's eating something from the um from the mother's open chest and so i was assuming that she was feeding him some kind of poison from her breast milk <laughs> and uh, when the camera angles move away the man baby appears to be dead i have heard about fetishes like this and they are weird but even if this man has a fetish of being uh, treated like a baby, I do not think that he had originally thought that he was going to die. I could definitely see the characters of the mother lady reenacting the role that she played in the short, though. Uh, like I said, the, film's, the film starred uh, Sarah Heinzman uh, as uh, mother lady and Steve Murray as uh, man, uh, uh, the man baby. The next short film, uh, and again, I don't know the order that these films were filmed in, is Boyfriend, Hell Hath No Fury, Like a Woman Scorned. And this is a short film about a relationship between a young man and a woman, the, uh, the woman being a girlfriend to the young man that apparently is the breadwinner of the relationship, but he is entirely too nice which makes him kind of boring as some girlfriends do she outgrows his personality real quick so on a particular night when the boyfriend comes home she cooks, cooks him some kind of dinner and puts something in what he eats and after a few moments you think he is dying and going to turn into a zombie but instead he comes back as a drag queen and chases the this girlfriend down the hall the girlfriend takes one of her high heels smashes it into the drag queen's forehead and regardless ends up getting her comeuppance in the end in a sense this film kind of shows that sometimes it's better if you just don't wish anything at all just be happy with your circumstances. I know that I have been on the receiving end of being outgrown, unloved, and disliked for being too nicey-nice. Thankfully, myself, I have been with the same woman for 10 years. Uh, in high school, I myself was very much pushed aside myself because I was too nicey-nice, so I can relate to the boyfriend. I just don't think that I can relate to the changing into the opposite sex part. I think that the young woman who played the girlfriend played her duty part rather well. Um, I don't think that Danielle Simpson, who or Daniel Simpson, who played the boyfriend, seemed rather young, but he definitely had the nerdy part down. Uh, this film was definitely done in a similar style to like that of like John Waters, so I almost think that the film is kind of sent out to the genre that he created. Uh, the next, uh, uh, the film starred Lashana Haskell as the girlfriend. In Sold Out, which is another film that was filmed in 2012, this is a 
done in association with another production company called Ulexite Films, which I believe is the first time that Retro, uh, 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 Productions has paired up with another company to do a production. And this film was called Self Doubt, which was also, uh, like I said, in 2012. Uh, the film begins with a drunk couple making out just before the door in which behind the female lives and uh they are making out uh, as they are making out the man asks the woman if he could come in she takes a quick glance sees her child just inside so she makes the decision not to let him come in probably because she does not want to see her child see her with anyone else just yet the next morning or the next day, I'm not exactly sure which, but Molly, the woman who is a single mother, is waiting for a text from the man that she had been with the night before. Her son Milo comes into the room saying he has drawn a picture of the Easter Bunny. And while Molly is trying to figure out what is going on with the man, it seems that Milo does a little bit of an overkill of wanting the attention of his mother. When Molly gets a text back from the man telling her to leave him alone, she ends up locking herself up in the bathroom, and it looks like she's about to drown herself. But she comes out, goes to a bar, comes back, and wakes up only to have her son say the Easter Bunny didn't come. So what happens next is they both dress up like zombies and go raid a public Easter egg hunt. I thought the acting was really good. I thought the kid was great. A perfect rec uh, recognition uh, of an ADHD child, uh, an overactive ch uh, child with overactive imagination, and a mother going through depression and having to de uh, deal with motherhood alone. On another level, I felt that the film was very strange. I mean, one minute the mother is sad and depressed, and it looks like she's going to kill herself, and the next they are dressing themselves up like it's Halloween to go on, on an Easter egg hunt. Though I think that this short film was weird, I thought it was different and vibrant in color. I enjoyed the film for what it was. It starred Lawrence Moore as Milo and uh, Dana Nelson as Molly. In the short film Worms, which is the, uh, the the last and final short film that I'm going to tell you all about, is it's a horror comedy from 2014 called Worms. The film involves two rednecks out in the wood, Herb and Lumpy, and Herb's dog Domino. They're out hunting some bucks. And it looks like the buck is dragging its own leaves to cover its own trail. But Domino, the dog, has been acting kind of strange. And Herb believes that the dog has worms. The thing is, while they're out in the woods, the dog ends up wandering off and finding its way into a toxic spill. It is rather noticeable that Herb is also itchy. So I believe that he takes a tumble into the toxic slime. The worms that had invested themselves in the dog had turned into parasites that seemed to take over the human brain, and its functions as Lumpy is soon to discover. Being someone who grew up with a family that used to get up at the crack of dawn and walk down a four-and-a-half-mile trail in the freezing cold to go and set up camp to watch for deer and hunt them with bow and arrow i remember what it was like as i was always called copsy and my cousin was called tropsy because i always coughed so they would say that i would scare the deer away my cousin chris always seemed to drop his gloves so they would say that that would scare the deer away as well so knowing the comedy that is somewhat involved in hunting the fact that the shooting was supposedly spot on isn't always the truth. So when Herb makes the comment that he's shooting anything that moves, that kind of goes back to the lackluster, I don't give a shit, what I kill kind of hunter attitude that people are always afraid of. 
But for some reason, when the worm overtakes Herb and you see the blood tears dripping down his face as the screen goes dark, and you hear the shots uh, go out, that was laugh out hilarious for some reason. I thought the two characters acted their parts out to a T. They put out what was needed, and I think the worms looked more like a stingray, uh, like stingray looking like slugs. <laughs> but there was definitely enough comic relief in the film, as it should be totally out there and just as weird as the other three films that I have discussed. If any of these short films sound like stuff that you might be into watching. Even though these are short films, you should definitely get a chance to seek this film uh, out and watch. I was definitely entertained by all of these films, and I'm glad that I did see them and also let me see what kind of style and genre that the director tends to film into. I think that I would like to recommend Heidi more as one of the better filmmakers out there, especially when I know that she is up and coming and there really isn't a lot of female horror film directors out there. And there was much, she puts a lot of verb into, uh, 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 into her films. The problem uh, with her is that she's not very fan approachable at least to me. I had just gotten a, a, a off an interview with someone who worked with her um, and another per, a person who worked with her on Dolly Deadly 2. Uh, and the way that she treated me, me was just uncalled for. And that is just my experience with, uh, with her. I'm... Still glad that I watched her short films, and I recommend her films for others to uh, see. I can separate the filmmaker from the person, but I would not try to recommend to try to get to know her. Because from my experience, she has a really bad attitude. And I've heard other things of her to make me believe that this is exactly the case. So hopefully you enjoyed my description of this film. I'm sorry that I had to say some negative things about the director uh, through, the, uh, this, um, through this review of her short films because I really did enjoy her, her films. I really did want to have her on the sh uh, show because I really did want to help her out. She just didn't seem to want to do anything like that. So, like and subscribe to my page if you have not. Definitely check her films out if you so damn please. And uh, thank you for listening. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Appreciate it ahead of time. Enjoy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host, David Stragey, and here I have another review for you. Uh, but before I get into this review and uh, who it's directed by, uh, by uh, it's painful for me to go on about this director. Um, because last August of um, 19th, I had an interview with... Uh, couple of the directors uh, that are involved with uh, one of her future projects from uh, Troma. And I, I had it on August of 19th of last year. And then the following uh, week, I had an interview with um, Cassandra Seckler, who had also worked with her on this particular project that I'm going to talk about. and. Uh, I was uh, I was originally going to have her Hello, on the same episode, and, gentlemen, welcome. and um, that particular interview with Cassandra Seckler and Craig Jacobson was on August twenty second, and that following Sunday, I had set up 
in stone to interview Heidi Moore. Um, it came down to the last hour, uh, and she canceled uh, it like an hour before the show, uh, show time uh, due to uh, a deadline, which I totally understood. Um, the following day, when I hadn't heard from her by noon, my fiance decided to ask me if uh, if I would, you know, ask her, okay, whether we're even going to uh, set it up for a different day or whatnot. So I I told uh, I told her who I was uh, was again, how many people that I had interviewed before, so that uh, it, uh, so that it was to reassure her that I had interviewed p uh, people before, and me because I have a disability, I went uh, uh, went and told her, you know, th uh, that kind of thing, and she's uh, 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 she's like, well, I'm sorry, I can't do it right now, uh, 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 now, and I, I I was like, well, um. Can I at least, uh, can we at least set up a date? And uh, that's when she got real tyrant with me. Uh, and um, I got a little upset because, you know, I had followed her all the way from, uh, uh, followed her work all the way from Legless Cor uh, uh, Corpse uh, films. I'd, I'd, picked up her film which to me uh when you put money to buy a film of a filmmaker that means something that, uh, 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 that means that someone is paying attention to your work now later i had actually put money into her, do uh, her dolly deadly to um um campaign because i really really enjoyed her work and uh, so when i do reviews from time to time i uh, uh, at the time i was writing reviews a lot so what i did is i paired a bunch of her films together and reviewed them in, all in a row uh and when i talked to pe uh, people when i talked to directors i talked to them as friends because i'm not a total critic i'm not a total asshole with which to me is what a a film critic is an asshole uh, they are basically there to shit on a film. Uh, a reviewer, on the other hand, will take a look at a film and r review it. The, uh, they'll describe it and leave it up to the film re uh, reviewer and state whether they liked it or, uh, or uh, whether they didn't, and maybe mention one or two things that they didn't like about the production or uh, vice versa, and then leave it uh, leaves it up to uh the viewer uh, more or less uh, that is what i believe a reviewer is and as the conversation went on she thought that i was uh, trying to get uh, get one for uh, for uh, that uh, that day i was just trying to get a response or at least a a i wasn't trying to force her, uh, her. i was trying to at least get her to say uh, uh, uh hey um I'll get back to you at a later date or something. She didn't even say that. Well, after that, and then she said that um, at this point in time, I will, uh, I will, I will not uh, uh, have the interview with uh, with you. So at that this point, I blocked her. A week. But before I said that, I said that uh, 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 she's. Uh, uh, she said something to the effect that, uh, that I don't know how to speak to women. And that, that hurt because I do know how to speak to women. And after that, someone who have, has actually worked with her on a, uh, uh, on a set and, uh, and worked on, uh, as a horror reviewer evidently for 10 years at horror.net or whatever, uh, she uh, started getting on my case and uh, started uh, saying uh, public, uh, publicly 
that what I was doing was uh, wrong, that uh, you do everything with integrity. Well, I was just telling the truth at the time. Um, I was a little upset because this was my first cancellation and my first case the cancellation that was so rude. And, uh, so to, uh, to me, in my experience, this director um, does not know how to speak to fans and isn't, uh, isn't able to take a social situation and essentially I was just trying to help her because anyone who's been on my show um, has been he uh, helped, uh, uh, gotten a voice uh, to be heard. And that's what I was all about. And she refused. She, uh, uh, I mean, I speak with women on my podcast and uh, that hurt. She even started to speak to my 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 co-anchors uh, uh, behind my back, and that's what hurt even more, you know. Um, and uh, my fiance actually messaged her company uh, company that uh, she was out of line. Uh, so um, that being uh, said, I will go on with my. A review. <sighs> so this film is directed by Wretched Productions director Heidi Moore in association with Dreams for Dead Cats Productions and distributed by Chad Armstrong's Le Legless Corpse Films in 2015, uh, uh, 16. And it was a smash underground indie hit from what I understand at their festival. Uh, here is what the film looks like. Um, I just wanted to take a, a gander and show you what it look, uh, looks like. It's called Dolly Dearest. And um, there is the L Legless Corpse um, logo. You will not be able to find Legless Corpse online anymore because Chad Armstrong contracted... Uh, stage four cancer, and in the middle of trying to, uh, or actually towards the end of trying to um, direct and produce and film his Desmodine. In fact, a lot of people lost money on that film. But in any case, let's go on about Dolly Deadly. It is a very emotional film. Um, and at the t uh, time, I really liked it, which is why I started to follow uh, this director's work and uh, I found out that she had earlier work and uh, some newer work. So, um, so after I had watched her earlier uh, work, I proceeded uh, to watch Dolly Deadly uh, be uh, because when I when I view a filmmaker's film, I normally tend to watch their career from beginning to end, so I can see the see the progression. So the film be uh, begins in a trailer park where a young baby boy is sitting on a bed filled with dolls watching his mother, Tina Lynn, played by Nelson, uh, get dressed and try to beautify herself. Tina is a chain smoker and the trailer is filthy. There are all kinds of hornets infesting the windows and she decides to, from what I understand, change her hair color with some kind of new hair product. The only thing is, it starts to burn and goes right through her head to her brain and explodes. This was definitely the, a very unique beginning. I'm, I was really digging the special effects of uh, this beginning blow-up scene. Now, I have also watched Cassandra Seckler's films as well. So I'm sure I will see her influence in the film as well, since she kind of wrote this with Miss Moore. Little Benji, uh, Justin Moore, I believe Heidi's son, which was the child's name, has now grown up and has been, uh, been living with his uh, grandma Mitzi, uh, played by West Carroll. And uh, Benji seems to live in his own little world as we see a segment where he is dancing in front of his mother's dolls. 
which are now his. I love how we get to see how he could be imagining where he is tap dancing on a stage for his animated uh, dolls. So we get to see a little bit of his imagine, uh, imaginative world that, uh, that he seems to involve himself in. Um, Benji's grandmother, Mitzi, has a living boyfriend who all day long just watches TV and drinks beer on her dime. And they're both sick and tired, although he could care less. Sick and tired of watching him play with his dolls when he, he should be doing boy things like playing baseball or hanging out with friends instead of dolls, which is kind of a girly thing. Now, from time to time, uh, uh, there are flights of an imagination that we are witness to. Like, there, uh, there's a moment where it seems like he comes home from work and uh, <laughs> with a leave it to beaver kind of attitude, uh, with a Pleasantville-like experience, it doesn't help that the neighborhood kids make fun of him either. Having to deal with the backlash of his grandmother and live-in boyfriend making fun of him every time, he tries to have a little bit of fun. Uh, but every time, Benji ends up escaping from reality and start uh, starting to believe in his fantasy world where he has created a world of dolls that almost have a life of their own. And he gets advice to kill them all. Now, there are some characters from the Turtle Park that we are introduced to, like a man who claims to have been abducted by aliens, wearing a tin foil hat on his head, who talks about revenge being sweet, and another character called the Rock Bottom, who believes himself to have been one of the greatest comedians around that used to open up for a place down in Mexico. So there are definitely some strange characters. So when the neighborhood kids take them into the woods and dress him up like the dolls that he plays with as a joke and all the verbal abuse that led up to Benji's little mind kind of just snapped. And one by one, he began to kill off the people that treated him like shit. I really enjoyed this film. There were it was definitely a lot of color schemes that were throughout the, uh, uh, the film that were avant-garde, very feng shui and definitely a new age film a lot of reds and greens and yellows and blues for probably being on a very low budget this actually really looked like a really cool art project in a topsy-turvy kind of way i mean there really wasn't any bad acting involved i i think there were a lot of trailer park families that can relate to this kind of a, an environment but can our kid really grow up from knowing that his mother has died when he was very young and not grown up, fucked up? I mean, one does not blame the child for going into his own world, but you really feel bad for Benji because even though he played with dolls, he wasn't really causing any real trouble until it all boiled together like a hard-boiled egg, I mean. You can only treat someone bad for so long until they fight back. I thought the set design was awesome. I thought the soundtrack to the film was very unique, and I think it was due to the personality of Justin Moore that made Benji all the more uh, lovable, because he really didn't seem like he was that bad of a child. If this sounds like something that you would definitely watch, then I would seek the film out if I were you, for film being different and about revenge and about how one can turn into a killer, but how you can treat one another. I would certainly recommend this feature for it is a unique independent little animal of its own making. I was definitely entertained. Um, as I said, the film stars Justin Moore as Benji. Uh, Kimberly West Carroll as Grandma Mitzi, Jay, uh, Jay Susnick Ski as Donald, um, Dana Nelson as uh, Tina Lynn, and so on and so forth. So um, hopefully you enjoyed my description of this film. I definitely like the set design. Um, I just enjoy describing f uh, uh, films and getting my uh, a viewpoint out there. Now, as a, uh, as a director, 
she is a phenomenal director. Um, she definitely knows her colors and styles and knows uh, exactly what her, uh, uh, what she wants. She has a vision. But as a person towards other reviewers, towards the opposite kind of person in the film wor uh, world, I don't think she really has a very good attitude towards people of my ilk. So I would suggest be very wary um, if you are a reviewer when you are going about and talking to uh, Miss Heidi Moore. Um, I had a bad run in with her and I was just trying to explain what exactly happened w uh, with her before uh, I got into this film because I want um, other film reviewers and other interviewers to know what kind of person she is before you dive into um, dealing with someone of her ilk. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Thank you for watching. Have a good afternoon, uh, folks, and uh, thank you for listening. I I just enjoy talking about uh, films, and I, I wish things had gone a different way. But I think that this young lady need, uh, needs some help, at least, talking to her fans. Uh, uh, you, you don't try to piss off the people who could be investors in your future projects. And that's just me in my case. Enjoy. Thank you again for uh, so much for listening. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host, David Stragian. Here I have another re review for you, this time of four documentaries uh, that um, three of them I came across while I was um, searching through um, director Heidi Moore's filmography, uh, which a lot of it is open to the public. Um, and uh, I was very interested in her film o uh, work, um, and it pains me to talk about this filmmaker because she really insulted me last year, um, and I tried to get her on the show. Um, she, uh, last minute, like hour before, um, that she was supposed to come on. She, she uh, told me that she was, she had this deadline and uh, she was worried about it and she's sorry that she had to cancel. Um, and I was like, okay, but I wish that you had told me ahead of time uh, instead of telling me like five minutes beforehand. And uh, then the next morning, my fiance and I were sitting next to each other and uh, we were uh, we were talking. Well, hey, we, we I haven't heard from her uh, as to whether there was a um, return or a, a rescheduled um, interview. So I ex I reminded her who uh, who I was and and asked her if she had a rescheduled time and. Uh, she got real frust flustered with uh, with me. In fact, uh, uh, let's see if I can fi uh, find exactly what uh, what she actually said to me. All right, because I still have the messages. I wanted to say something about this before um, before I went on. Well, in any, ca any case, basically what happened is she thought that I was actually forcing her into 
uh, the so-called intro, even though it was kind of set in stone since the very beginning. And then she thought that I didn't know how to talk to females. <laughs> and yet I have females on Inside Movies Galore and talk to fe uh, I just talked to one of uh, uh, a female previously the week before uh, that had worked with her. And uh, one of the other directors actually worked with her on Dolly, uh, Dolly Deadly 2, um, which is after these documentaries. And um, he had, uh, uh, one of the guys actually sa said that he saw her actually um, treat her um, treat her employees or people underneath her like shit. Uh, so even though he he knew that she had a vision and she was a very good filmmaker, he didn't think that she was a very good person. So that being the ca case, it's very hard for me to talk about this person as much in the light as much as I originally did. So I'm just going to be, uh, go back to some of my original words uh, that I did on Movies Galore Milwaukee and go from there. So, um, some time ago I was interested in checking out Heidi Moore's newest documentary, More Blood, and uh, having somewhat followed Dolly Deadly, though not fully reviewing the film yet, at least, attempting to follow it, its steady course to Tromaville for its musical sequel. Uh, uh, for I had picked up Dolly Deadly from um, Legless Corpse Films. In fact, it was one of my last purchases with the distributor before Chad Armstrong's untimely demise, who was the owner and distributor behind Legless Corpse Films. He had stage four cancer. May he rest in peace. Having already reviewed the short films that I found, and and uh, I decided that um, I would uh, go on about these three documentaries that I found, uh, 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 as well as the fe the new feature that she has out there. Um, to me, describing a documentary is more in the involvement of keeping my attention while being very explicit, uh, explicitly to the point and uh, uh, whatever facts the doc uh, 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 documentary is all about. For example, I have been subjected to documentaries my entire school life and uh, that were supposedly educational but have entirely bored me to death and put me to sleep because they put someone like Ben Stein in his dry eye commercials as a narrator and often having really old organ music uh, so you're drowning in a piss of information then that you can't pay attention to. Now I realize that documentaries are a great way to share information that is accurate and informational but some documentaries can be very off key and can go way off subject. I like to be thorough though. So I will try to describe these three documentaries and the feature film documentary uh, um, thereabouts. Uh, two of them uh, go and delve into the burlesque territory, which is actually kind of cool because I podcast with someone who does burlesque on a daily given basis. Um, the first short documentary, uh, uh, which this first being uh, one of the longest is actually called uh, a Showgirl Style, it was uh, filmed by Wretched Productions in 2016. Um, and, and it was in the association with Country Kitchens, Kittens Burlesque, which is a troupe of burlesque girls that are completely body positive, meaning that they don't always judge by looks and have to be a certain type of body weight in general, but it is somewhat run by uh, burlesque international performer Annie Bolan uh, from about 2009, uh, 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 and uh, I'm not exactly sure when she gathered together uh, a retreat called Showgirl uh, Style in 
Twain Heart, California, but it would seem like this was a great avenue for women who wanted to get in touch with their sexuality, get to relax and learn dance routines uh, in a sort of meditative and natural environment. There are many ranges of women, some of the mothers, retail people, and uh, some that believe that they were always feeling like they were the odd ones out until they joined the, uh, this retreat. As we see, there is a dance workshop that is being taught by a young woman called Sabrina, um, who was another performer that was hired specifically to teach routines. Uh, Polly's role at the retreat was one of fitness, where one of the shops evidently dealt with keeping your body in shape and exercise. This is where it seems that women felt uncomfortable. They were not used to using or doing what, uh, what uh, <laughs> they were called, either twerking or booty popping. And the women ended up not feeling so awkward as they found out that it was not about how they looked and more about having fun while not feeling like prey. Miss Savvy, which... Um, Miss Savvy, I believe, was not with Country uh, Kitchens. In fact, um, the Country Kittens were only Annie and Polly. Um, the rest of the instructors were hired for, uh, for the event. And Miss Savvy, she is a producer herself. And you can find her in events uh, uh, in Honolulu at Savvy's, or Savvy's uh, Surf Shack. And apparently this um, retreat lasted for about four years and is over now, though. So um, but she was there to teach these girls how to turn into a canary. Basically, teach musical theater from cute fossy numbers to sweet cherries. Hey, big spender. This documentary was really about how nervous some of these girls were. They went into this retreat and they realized in the end, it wasn't about how other people moved in their ways or how well others di uh, did the movements or the singing of the tunes, but in fact, incorporate the uh, uh, things that they already knew and have fun and relax. The Savvy also conducted a social media class for, or workshop as it were for, uh, for there was a lot of promotional value in how to get the word out on social media about your burlesque shows if you're doing it independently or if you're part of a troupe. So in fact, this is about empowering women to be able to teach them how to self-market themselves, which if you're in the burlesque field and you're already successful, and I've had experience, I had the experience, like these ladies seem to have had it, we've seen that this retreat was very helpful to these ladies and getting them ready for the world with their empowerment and sexuality. I felt that this was very informative about the behind the scenes work of what a burlesque woman seems to, uh, as, uh, sometimes has to go through in the sense that I could almost call this showgirl style retreat a kind of burlesque boot camp, so to speak. And whether this retreat um, is still uh, 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 going, I found that out afterwards. Um, it lasted for four years, like I said. Um, but um, I believe that the modern burlesque woman could actually take away from this documentary a certain confidence that they can do just as well. I think this film was shot really well. I, I felt th uh, there were definitely some pretty decent footage of some dance routines and some workouts and how it seems this retreat was handled. Uh, in the end, I enjoyed watching this documentary. And I would definitely recommend that if this film sounds like something that you would watch, seek the film out if you can. Um, 
I would like to think that this retreat is actually still being practiced and the women behind the workshops, the savvy uh, Sabrina, Annie Bolin and uh, uh, Polly Urethrain all seem like they were into what they do and do not seem like they, if they banded together again, that they would quit when it seems like they have accomplished so much. Uh, starring in Showgirl style is Annie Bolin as herself, um, Miss Savvy as herself, Polly Urethrain uh, as herself, and so on and so forth. The second documentary film uh, that I wanted to go on about is called uh, Gora, the Man and the Legend. Um, and this was also put forth by Wretched Productions, where we have a man that comes from India by the name of Gora Chand Saha. Director Heidi Moore calls this, uh, calls this short under six minute documentary Gora, the man and the legend. Not even though I did, even though I didn't find the spelling very informative, I find that this documentary emitted a very different reaction than I thought. It was actually inspiring, but I also feel that this was a practice at seeing what she could film in a very short time. Also, because I think that in meeting Gora. It is hard not to take pity upon a man so excited about finally getting into acting at the age that he is in. I would say that the biggest problem this documentary has is because Gora seems to act so weird and over the top uh, that this almost makes me feel like this is a mockumentary, that a documentary, because he doesn't exactly protrude seriousness. You have to see the documentary yourself to understand. It's hard for me to take Gore seriously from just seeing this, and he's supposedly been in a short film that I know, the, uh, that I own, and I have not viewed yet called, reviewed yet called Night of the Sea Monkey, a disturbing tale. But there is something about it in the way that he excitedly speaks, which comes off to me as a little bit B acting and henceforth the reason why I can't take him entirely too seriously because it makes me feel like this story isn't entirely true. But I know that he, he knows telling that his way and the way that he's talking about his life. It's more like he's telling a story, but then again, this might just be the way that he is in general because of that natural excitedness that he articulates and makes him a better B actor, even though small the parts may be. I will say that I enjoyed this documentary, if more because I felt Gora is in fact a very goofy man, and if this is true about how excited he is, and this is how he really is, then I apologize for not fully believing him. That's not to say that this wasn't a good documentary, exploring the kind of person that he is from his own words. Again, this film sounds like something that you would like to watch, then I would definitely say go and seek it out. I enjoy the film for what it is. Starring Gora the Man and the Legend, Gora Shan Saha as himself. The third film that I wanted to go on about about the is a is also a document uh, uh, Terry um, is called Tucker Noir and it, fi it was filmed in 2017 with Gretchen Productions and we are introduced to Noel Julian Anker, a drag king sweetheart from North uh, Northern California, while he is hosting Chico California's 2016. Gay Pride Weekend. Noelle goes into explaining in the beginning of the film one of her greatest influences being Vesta Tilly, uh, part of a uh, husband and wife routine where her husband produced the stage numbers and supported his wife as a drag king in which the husband was knighted by the Queen of England for women of that time could not be knighted. 
Noelle goes into explaining how all the while she was growing up, she had never had the figure of a girl and did not grow breasts like the rest of the women her age. So she always felt like the oddball out. Knowing that she had a more manly physique, she decided to try wearing women's clothing one night at a club and her dressing a, dra a, dra a drag like man just grew from there and hence transforming herself into the stage name Tucker Noir. The thing that got me is that she was teased and that she looked like a boy and then it seemed like she took that persona just one step further and made it entertaining and entertainment for others. She said she came up with the name Tucker because a lot of drag queens do this thing called tucking and the way that she was going about and choreographing dance routines were snow noir. What I got out of this documentary, so to speak, is that in becoming Tucker and putting on the shows that she does as this fantasy of a man that she has created, a persona, in which to become something and something someone totally different than her herself or himself, that in fact she found confidence in while being on stage while she was Tucker and be he becomes her backbone in everything she does on a normal given basis. Though I myself do not entirely understand why people would want to dress a different way or love a different a difference in genre, I am open and aware and understanding that people will be exactly how they want to be loved. Who they want to be loved, no matter how wrong or how right you grew up believing otherwise. This is also a changing world for sexuality. There was an underworld lying in the burlesque sense of the world that is now more than ever shining its light and being brought out on display anytime you see a show. No matter the gender nor the roles that are portrayed by a person or actress or actor on stage, it is an accomplishment to have fun no matter what you can see. Or from the little clips of Tucker being on stage at this gay pride festival that he is in, or she in her own element. On a different level, I enjoyed watching this film, though I am not exactly endorsing that anyone should go out and dress and drag and become a king or, or become a queen in the world of burlesque. If this is the kind of activity that helps you on the way to your happiness, then have at it and have fun. If this sounds like a film that you would watch down the road, then I would suggest that you seek this uh, film out if you can. I enjoyed the message that uh, was displayed that uh, that drag is about requiring you to own your awesomeness and put it on display for everyone, no matter whether you look like a fool or not, so long as you entertain. The film stars Tucker, uh, Tucker Noir, known as Noelle Julian Anchor, as herself. Um, and the final film that I wanted to go on about it, it was filmed in 2018. And uh, it is a documentary feature uh, in feature length called More Blood. It's brought to us by Wretched Channel Productions and Charlie Pennell Productions director Heidi Moore, who has already directed, like I said, the previous um, documentaries before this, as well as several short films and features including Dolly Deadly and its sequel, which was picked up by Trauma. Uh, this is a new documentary involving being quite a few of people in horror in the horror film industry about why they love certain films and love to see death and gore and violence and more of it. The, the film begins by interviewing each of these filmmakers and special effects makers, as well as YouTube reviewers at least newer film reviewers in the horror business. So I like that there are some of the all walks of life. We start out from hearing, with hearing from uh, a man by the name of Robert Soffin, or so, uh, Sofian, 
who I believe is a college professor as well as a writer and a 30 year uh, a, a career at Shasta College in Redding, California. As a professor of theater, directing, and lighting countless productions, as well as painter in, in art, he tells us about the first film that got him into her. And, uh, and uh, that would be Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. That shower scene with the camera movements. Now we are introduced to an unknown horror analyst, at least unknown to me, where I've been reviewing films for quite some time and figuring out exactly who is who with each blog page by the name of Chelsea Alperman, where she describes a scene from Poltergeist where one of the ghost hunters looks into a mirror and his face just starts to deteriorate. And at the time, it scared the shit out of her, but now to her, it's kind of corny. But the adrenaline was rushing through her at the moment uh, time being so young and probably knowing that you shouldn't be watching the film. Next, we have uh, on an author of a book called Our Lady of the Inferno, Preston Fassel, who talks about Predator, the film Predator, and how he finally saw it, and how, uh, uh, how they were shooting off arms and limbs, which was quite violent for what he was used to, and um, it left him with a memory. Jason Thompson, Bad Seed FX guy from Atlanta, speaks on the film called Squirm, which was about a bunch of worms that would eat people that came from the ground. And now we are getting into some interesting personalities on here where we have Cassandra Seckler uh, from Wireboy, uh, known for her experimental and colorful films, where she talks about how one of the films that she was brought up on was Night of the Living Dead, uh, uh, directed by George Romero. Uh, then we are brought in what I thought was the UK scenery, but is in fact uh, Swedish from Sweden, a filmmaker, uh, uh, film reviewers by the Bitches of Horror, uh, a young lady, um, Jasmine Martinez, who often partners with actress and director um, Sarah Gierkski, um, who I've interviewed on my own show uh in doing online film analysis reviews together where she talks about the guinea pig series flower of flesh and blood which i agree with her on was quite gory where we have a young woman naked and drugged as her limbs are being cut off she's still alive and it looks very real uh next we are introduced to the guys from the 13th floor uh blog um jeremiah rosario and uh, David Ronsky, which I believe that these guys are fairly new since I've been writing for the last five years, but I have heard of each of them, uh, 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 of us, but I have heard of them as bloggers, uh, uh, and uh, they're on the different sides of the horror spectrum, but Jeremiah, like Jasmine, was speaking about the guinea pig Fil uh, films where David and his partner brought up Evil Dead. Um, then we have JK, apparently a YouTube or podcast host of some sort at Horror Happens Radio Show, where he mentions the Faces of Death series of, of films, the part where uh, the monkeys had it, a head is taken apart, and how it looks so real and lifelike, and it did, at least uh, to me any anyways. We have Chainsaw Sally, who in real life is April Burrell. She talks to uh, about her experience watching John Carpenter's The Thing, which in, a, which in a sense was a creature that kept changing and the effects that were used uh, were just phenomenal and scary to her. We also have Filmmakers Tom Commissar and Daniel Murphy of H. M. M. Productions, where Tom talks about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by Toby Hooper. Now he had rented a copy of the film and his animations of in what in of how he was putting the VHS in the machine. It's kind of comical because I remember only in that kind of uh, kind of. Uh, a machine. So basically, this documentary is a run through of these people's top favorites, and then it looks at like some of the films 
that some of the others had his favorites and chimed in on their thoughts on how gory and how scary each of the moments were. The Exorcist was brought up where uh, the moment of the head spinning around in the puke projectile, which has evidently been a big deal at that time. It's not a whole lot of people at the time seeing that kind of thing in a horror film before. What's interesting is that John Waters was mentioned in the same sentence a sentence as nudie cuties. <laughs> Whether it's talking about Peter Jackson's Brain Dead or talking about Cannibal Holocaust and its serene beauty and its violence and the beauty in its soundtrack uh, to talking about the character Jigsaw, the uh, main focal points that I think the, uh, that this documentary, uh, 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 what's across uh, or what, what it gets across is that there is no idea of extremism that goes on in ho uh, horror. Everybody's always trying to outscare the next person, whether it's films being gory or for gore's sake or even beyond or anyone who is a horror fan is always going to try showing the next person uh, then hey did you see this uh, 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 this film i bet you uh, can't see 10 minutes of this there is a boundary that horror crosses and it crosses it all the time and whether they are going to do that with darkness, that darkness waiting beyond uh, from these directors and film reviewers. All I can say is that you just want more of it. One of the things that I'd like to underline is that you must be original. You can't just keep making the same thing over and over, or you would lose your audience as long as it's different and unique. After a little while, we are introduced to Kim Culpepper from Femme creative productions where she teaches uh, touches on the subject that you're almost getting desensitized from seeing a lot of power and and being a, a horror watcher myself i myself have been desensitized so i know the feeling but you mentioned a newer uh, 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 film called the belko experiment which i have not seen myself so i can't exactly say yay or nay many of these horror fa uh, fans are saying that they want to see that next level that they want to see more fucked up shit and uh, and to be disgusted even the legendary lloyd kaufman shows up to talk about the freak shows how rich the uh, freaks really were during the uh, barnum and bailey days i don't want to tell everything i just wanted to tell uh, an extended version of some of the things that were talked about in this documentary. I thought that this was very well thought out. It was uh, definitely a great mix of different characters, and I'm sure that there were other characters that, you know, showed up to tell their little bit too. But I found this retrospective fascinating. I've seen various films dealing with horror, and I think that uh, this is a very coming of age humanitarian effort to show a little bit into the extreme gore lovers at least of this day and age and talk about the reasons why and the reasons behind why they want to see what they want to see i thoroughly enjoyed the way that everyone that was involved with this documentary were able to get a retrospective of what they thought and think and express the reasons why some of us might watch some of the more extreme films so i want to say that i will recommend this documentary for all horror film lovers i think it comes out the horror perspective from a different angle of some of the more modern indie reviewers and podcasters along with some of the various directors that have not been heard before that are very in at this day and age if this documentary sounds like something that you would uh definitely like to see then i would suggest that you seek it out in your own matter to watch it yourself i'm sure that it would eventually be making the circuit in festivals and then eventually it might be released to the public but i certainly was entertained by different personalities and horror the uh, uh in horror that were interviewed and i think that heidi moore really does know how to inspire someone who is not an entire 
pan of documentaries into liking herself. In any case, hopefully you enjoyed my description of this, uh, these films. Like and subscribe to my page if you have not. Definitely check this uh, these documentaries out if you get a chance. If these sound like something that you would watch, check them out. Thank you so much. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed going on and describing at, uh, at least some of my feelings behind some of the things that have happened. And I'm sorry that I see her in somewhat of a negative light. If you don't, that's fine. I can separate the filmmaker from the person. And I think that the, uh, the filmmaker, as a filmmaker, she's got great vision. As a person, it is in my experience that she is a horrible person, at least fan-wise. Enjoy. You were good, kid, real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see?